My name is Henri Sergil. I'm from New York, originally from Haiti. I build bikes, more so custom bikes for uh, messengers, for commuters, and anybody that actually wants something out of the norm. This is the lab. The lab is where all the magic happens. This is where I pretty much come up with all my themes, you know, for these bikes and color schemes. And if I need to outsource, I might need an anodizer. I might need a plater. I may need somebody to do things that I can't do here. So there's a team of individuals that I work with. You know, it's not just typical stores, but fabricators and people that are very talented in what they do and is just working as a team to help this vision come together to make this bike truly what it should be. I mean, I do all my final assembly work here. Um, it started quite a few years ago, buying my first Fixie and it was a good and bad experience at the same time. Like I was sold a frame that was actually too small for me and I didn't know much about road bikes or fixed gear bikes. And I started riding around and commuting like from from Rockaway all the way into the city. I'm just like holy shit, like this is just not right. Like there's something wrong, you know? And so I started building my own bike, you know, and really got to appreciate the whole fixed gear thing, you know, because it was just so foreign to me. It was just a learning experience and learning how to uh, put a bike properly together with the right frame size, the right stem length, you know, and just angling everything properly and using the right parts and using parts that last as opposed to like bullshit parts that within a few months of writing, you know, every day they just fall apart because at the end of the day like when you go to most shops it's about moving whatever product they have it's not necessarily the best product that you should have and it's not tailored to you for your use I stay focused on how parts are put together you know the the tolerances and the quality you know how they're machined because at the end of the day a cog is not just a cog you know if it's too there's a couple of millimeters too small because they decided to skimp out on material because it would end up being cheaper and they can produce more. What it ends up being is an inferior quality product and then you have more chain noise and you have chain slap, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. It's a piece that will last years on your bike, you know, as opposed to you buy a cheaper cog and it ends up lasting less than six months you know because the material is just it's barely enough for it to work properly and it's not meant to last it's meant for it to be used and come to the point where it's about to fail and then you have to buy another one my dad was a photographer but he ended up doing like a I won't say menial job. He was uh, he worked for New York Waterways for years and years, and never really followed his passion. And I always wish that he was able to do that, but he always embraced that side of his personality, where it's just have to work and do this. Like that's what was instilled in him from a very young age, and. That became instilled in me also, but, you know, just like him, I've always had a knack to do something else. Like, I've been mechanically inclined since I was a kid, just breaking up stuff just for the sake of seeing what the hell is inside. Like, how does this work? And I would break all my toys as a kid, you know? And my mom would just be so pissed for me doing that, you know? But from that, I was able to you know, work on cars and work on bikes, you know, but like my dad, um, he ended up working 
so much that by the time he got sick, he didn't even really, I don't know, he just kept pushing too hard doing that when he should have been, well, I personally feel he should have been focused more on his other talents, like his art, you know, like he was a phenomenal photographer. And um, I don't know, he ended up passing um, at the age of 59. Um, he, his cancer was misdiagnosed by the doctor he was seeing. And it's just like all that just came to an abrupt end. That influenced me so much to the point where it was just like, I wanna do bikes and I have to incorporate and I have to do this and focus more and give it more energy and yeah, just make it what I want to do. It fueled my drive to really come out of just doing the everyday mundane thing to doing something that I love and something that is appreciated by the people that I'm working with and working for, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, they get a product that is just, I know, it, you can't knock it, you know, it is what it is, you know, I build clean, dope bikes for people that I've never had any complaints, you know, so it's just like, why not, why not just go in like balls deep and just do it, you know, just build. And it's just a simple invention. I mean, there's, there's not much to a bike. A bike is just, it's wheels, it's a chain, you know, a couple of bearings here and there, you know, and a seat, a frame. Anybody can work on a bike, you know, but it's not everybody that has the vision to make a bike what it is. When a bike is built right, there's good movement, like everything flows properly. Like, I don't know, just seeing somebody ride their bike is just like, it's almost art.